Mike Zero, Foxtrot, X-Ray, Bravo, Digital, Ham Radio, Diary. M0 FXB, so you've got your jumbo hotspot through the post and uh, we just want to get it configured so that it will work on your, you know, your device. Uh, this is presuming that you've bought it preloaded with the image on the SD card. So we're going to take the SD card out here. Put it out here, it's a bit fiddly, it might be easier to use tweezers. Just about managed to get hold of it there. So it comes out this way. Get it into an adapter. Like this. Put it into the adapter and put that into our PC laptop. And then we're going to use uh, Pistar Wi-Fi Builder to, to load our username and password of our home broadband router. Okay, so we've got the SD card in our laptop and we've gone to sort of my computer or this computer uh, and we can find it here and then it is called, on my computer, it's called Boot E. It will be called Boot. Now, if it asks you to format it, I would say no because don't forget we're configuring a, you know, a, a, a jumbo spot that's been that has the software on it you bought it it has the sd card in it already with all the all this all the image on it you're just adding your wi-fi details so go to this page here which is pistar.uk and go down to wi-fi builder so it's pistar tools and then it's called wi-fi builder and i don't let that confuse you it just means it's creating a file that we're going to put in the sd card that will connect it to your you know, just like your phone does with your username and password for your broadband router at home and making sure that any computer that you're using um, is also using that same username and password so you're all on the same network. So let's just uh, make one up here for now. So let's just say you're at home, your username is um, my home, just for example, and then you click um, password. Uh, you could put in, um, um, again, you could put my hotspot. Yeah, but it could be anything. And when you click submit, like so, click submit, and here on the left you've got WPA supplicant, and it probably won't have a number after it. It's just I've, I have made a few. So all you do is just click the arrow, show in, click, select show in folder, and I would literally right click that copy it yeah then go back to boot e select boot e and then just up in this list just above it i would right click and i'll paste now if you go to the very bottom now you will see that it now says wpa supplicant and that means that it is now ready to go into your jumbo spot and then what we're going to show you next is that we're going to plug in the put the sd card in the jumbo spot then we're going to turn it on and you're going to see um, how we can then find the jumbo spot using our uh, uh, an IP address uh, or the other one is to use pistar.local and I'll show you I'll show you exactly how to do that uh, next okay we've got our SD card here and we're going to uh, plug it into the, the slot here it just slips in, it's that way round. Just push it in like so, and it's in. And then what we're gonna do, now it's in, we're gonna add some power, so it's just a usual micro USB. You want it to be one amp, I would say, at least, really. Um, so just plug that into the power, like so. There you go, and it will all start flashing away as you can see, but you won't get anything on the screen yet. We're going to now go over to the, back to your computer, and I'll show you how to find um, this jumbo spot. Right, so we're back at the laptop, and now to find it, we're going to type in and copy this exactly, lowercase, put pi dash star dot local and then a slash and 
see the way it's gone blue already here i'm going to select that and because my my windows 10 is finding it already so but you know this is you know, the pi star dot local slash is what you need if you want you can put in http um in front but you shouldn't need to and then when you click it you'll come up with this window no mode defined and then it will ask you for a password so if it doesn't ask for the password straight away, oh, it's done it now. Now the password is pi dash s t a r, like that with a gap in there. Then raspberry r a s p or lowercase e r r y, and then click sign in. So you now have basically connected to your uh, jumbo hotspot. Now you won't see any changes on the jumbo hotspot yet because you haven't told it what to do yet. So this is the, this is now this is now you just telling it what frequencies you're going to use, who you are, uh, and what you're going to what you're going to transmit on. So you don't have to change the host name. Um, see the settings here at the top. You don't need to touch them for a simplex jumbo spot. So just here, just get your call sign in, like so. So for me, it's M0FXB, and the f frequency that I use, but you can use whichever one you like within the band planned plan dot five five oh is what i use there you go i'm, I'm not going to put a location now so you don't worry about any of this uh, and then keep going yeah you don't have to change anything yet so once you've got it the same as i've got it but with your call sign actually i'll do capitals for my call sign m0 fxb then just apply those changes. Now it does take a couple of minutes. So we'll let them apply. So as it um as it boots, you'll get this sort of window here. So next part is to come into the, you're on this window here, go scroll to the top. Oh yeah, just click OK if it does that again. Go to the top and you want to select, we're doing D star, so select D star here. And then see this, if you've just got a normal jumbo hotspot with a little blue TV screen, like, like the one in the video, just select here OLED type 3. Ignore, keep, keep this at Devity AMAO, ignore the G4KLX uh, for now. And then this is really important, scroll down and see that on the, the heading is general configuration. See where it says radio modem type. You're now selecting the jumbo spot that you've got. So just drop that down and select the one that I select, which is this one here. STM32 DVM MMDVM HS dash Raspberry Pi hack GPO. Select that. Now you, sometimes you've got to do this a couple of times, but if we're lucky, um, we won't have to. Now we're going to click apply changes. And what's going to happen now? We're going to go over when it's applied. We're going, to, we're going to go over to the jumbo spot and you'll see that the TV screen starts working and it should start receiving um, some information, but we still have to select one which reflector we're going to go on. So let's apply changes now. Give that a minute. Okay, that's good. And I'll just, I'll show you the hotspot in a sec, but as soon as I did that, uh, the TV screen has come to life and it actually announced that it was connected to, zero, to Reflector 30 Charlie only because my radio is already configured to to that. And I'll, in, in the next part of the video, I'll show you how to configure the ID51. Um, so just going to show you the settings here again. D-Star, OLED, and you've got that section there. Frequency, the radio modem here. And it's by default, it's under the, so you go at the top, scroll down to the one that says D-Star configuration, and, and you want to remember this, that it says M0FXB, then with a B letter, and here there's a G letter, because that's what we're going to be putting into our ID51. Uh, we don't need a remote password at the moment. So, and then look, see the way it says here reflector 1, and then you've got a C, well you don't have to, select that you can select all these different ones reflectors and dcs and all sorts but we'll leave it on 1c because that's the popular one just to show so you show you it working right let's move uh, let's, let's take you over to the 
Jumbo Hotspot, show you that, then we'll configure the radio and then we'll give it a test. What it looks like when it's working, it says D star, it's got my call sign, you know, when I key it has, it's got the IP address that we're on, uh, it says CQ, CQ. So that's, uh, right now that's a fully working uh, Jumbo Hotspot. So now let's just uh, configure the radio, getting the the right frequencies into DR mode. Uh, and then um, we'll go on and maybe just give it an audio test after that.